Hi, I'm Dempsey Poolot, and this week I'm reviewing. Now before we start off, as always, I just want to take a quick second to remind you guys to make sure you hit that like button if you like today's video, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing as well for more new content weekly. But without further ado, let's jump into today's series. Created by John Carney and based on the New York Times column of the same name with contributions from all over the country, Modern Love is an anthology series in which each episode explores the various forms of, well, love. The first season starred notable actors such as Dev Patel, Tina Fey, Shea Wiggum, Ed Sheeran. <laughs> well, this one features the likes of Kit Harington, Minnie Driver, Lulu Wilson, and uh, Dominique Fishback, among many, many others. Now, I, I, I really enjoyed the first season of Modern Love. I don't know if I've mentioned this before on this channel, but I'm a very big John Carney fan. He's probably one of my favorite working directors today, if not my very favorite. And I especially love Sing Street. I know I've definitely mentioned that on this channel before. But I didn't just love the first season because he was attached to it. I loved it because, one, it was genuinely good, and two, it took New York, this place that I've lived in my entire life, and showed me a totally different side to it. The side that has been so crucial in the lives of so many other people in their journeys to finding love. While the first season was strictly set in New York, this season expands the universe a bit by showing a story set overseas primarily in the United Kingdom. And I really like that choice for this season because you can't just find love in New York. <laughs> it proves how truly universal love is, essentially. But despite that major step, I have to admit that some of the stories here just weren't as compelling as I expected them to be, or as some of the ones in season one. And that's not to say that season one was perfect because it certainly had its weak links. Here, I think that there are really only a few great episodes, while the rest are just so-so. One of my favorite episodes of this season is actually the coming-of-age story. It's Lulu Wilson's episode. In it, she plays a middle schooler who is falling for someone. And uh, that's all I'll say on that. Because, like, mostly anything, and especially the series, I think it's, it's best if you go in blindly. But in this episode, um... It's especially fun to not know what's going to happen because it has elements of a thriller to it. Uh, I think it does a really good job at capturing the chaos that is romance when you're that age uh, and just not knowing how to control your feelings, let alone your actions. Another episode that I really enjoyed this season is actually one in which Carney directed himself. And if I'm not mistaken, he contributes three this time around, but more specifically, it's the one in which Kit Harington stars. And aside from just being well done, this one stood out to me because I don't think, unlike the other episodes, I don't think it is based on a story that was contributed to the New York Times column. And I, I don't know for sure, but I have a really good hunch, mostly because of how relevant it is. It takes place during the pandemic. Uh, and if it is true that it was made for the, the show specifically, I would love to see more of that done in the future, especially if it fits in with the larger infrastructure. Uh, and it, I mean, it, it works seamlessly like this one does. Uh, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that uh, this season is filled with some really cool themes and concepts. But at the same time, we also get some really like cheesy cliches. Like, one of my least favorite episodes by far has to be uh, one in which there's a comedian who's looking back at her life and uh, reflecting on her childhood crush after he bumps into her at one of her shows. Uh, it, it is kind of sweet, and it does have some cute romantic elements to it. But as I said before, it's not as compelling as some of the other episodes in the season, let alone the series. And even though they're not all gems, I will admit that, at the very least, they're all enjoyable. My biggest criticism of the season by far is, and this is kind of going into spoiler territory for those who may not have seen season one, even though, I mean, I don't know why you would be watching a review for season two if you hadn't. Nevertheless, because some of the storylines are international this time around, we don't get that epilogue connecting everybody at the end. If you might recall, at the end of season one, we got to revisit all of the characters and see what they were up to, and it did a really nice job at bringing the whole season full circle. This time around, as I said, we don't get that, even though, in my opinion, some of the storylines do warrant that follow-up. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't revisit those storylines again in the future, but that, to me, was the biggest thing missing from the batch. Even though all the stories are connected by love, there's no true sense of solidarity. 
And yes, I guess that's the point of an anthology series, that not all the stories have to connect, but by connecting them, the first season was able to end on a high note. Here, without that connection, it ends on a kind of somber one. While the first episode does a really good job at establishing the change in scenery, I found the placement of most of the other stories to be kind of odd. Despite raising the bar, I will admit that the second season of Modern Love isn't quite as elevating as its predecessor, but its multitude of morals and messages is still more than enough to keep the spark alive. And for that, I'm going to give this season three and a half stars. It's a fairy tale. How does it end? Now, I was actually able to speak with John Carney, the creator of Modern Love himself, and I am so excited to share that interview with you guys because, as I mentioned earlier in this review, he is one of my favorite working directors today. Now, did I fangirl a little bit? Maybe. You'll just have to see. If you want to check out the full interview, I'll put the link down below in the description box. And hopefully you enjoy it just as much as I hope you enjoy this video. That being said though, I do want to thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to view this video. It really does mean the world to me. And once again, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button as well for more new movie and TV related content weekly. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you guys have seen the series or if you've seen the season, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Uh, let me know your favorite episode, who your favorite actor is, or your favorite story. I don't know. Have you heard of the column or read any of the stories? Or is there a story that you, you know about that you would like to see adapted? Anything. Just I look forward to reading and responding to all of your comments as always. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all the time that I have for you guys today. Uh, be on the lookout for more new content shortly. Uh, I don't know if you can hear, but I'm kind of losing my voice, so I'm going to get some rest, and then I'm going to get back to work. So, if you'll excuse me, until next time, I'm Dempsey Pilot. Take care.